All right, it's finally time for Aphrodite to repay Paris for awarding her the golden apple. She might have come to Paris in a dream telling him that his reward is the most beautiful woman in the world. Her name is Helen. She's queen of Sparta. And it's finally time to go and get her. Or maybe it was just by some kind of weird chance that Paris went to Sparta. Paris basically set up a expedition to Sparta to set up diplomatic uh, relations with their new king, Menelaus, seeing how Tyndarius had stepped down from the throne. Now, whether he knew or not, whether he was going to, you know, get Helen or not, uh, who knows. But before setting out, Cassandra and her brother Helenus, if you remember, they were the uh, two oracles, they both came to Paris basically to plead to him to not go to Sparta. Now, naturally, he probably thought, oh, Cassandra, you're just being crazy. Because, if you remember, uh, Cassandra's cursed by Apollo that no one will ever believe her predictions. But I kind of wonder why he didn't believe Helenus. Maybe he just thought they both were being crazy, or maybe he had word from Aphrodite that his, uh, his prize will be there for the taking. So, I don't know. But, so, Paris set sail to Sparta on the diplomatic mission. And when he got there, he was warmly greeted by Menelaus and Helen and the whole Spartan court, basically. He was treated to lavish feasts and all kinds of stuff, given gifts. And it's kind of not clear whether or not Helen and Paris fell in love. Or did Paris just abscond with her? I guess we, uh, in the modern age, kind of like the picture, you know, this young, romantic love story and stuff. But you have to remember that Paris is in his late 20s, early 30s by this time. So he's not a teenager falling in love. I mean, he kind of knows what he's doing by now. But who knows, maybe uh, Paris and Helen fell in love. Whether that would be from Aphrodite's doing, or just natural. Or maybe he did just steal her, basically. I mean, it can't be out of the realm of possibility. I mean, I mean, remember what Theseus and Perithos tried to do. But either way, uh, Paris and Helen fled Sparta at night and uh, got on their boat and left. Naturally, when Menelaus found out, he was fucking pissed off. Um, he uh, ended up going to his older brother, Agamemnon, who is now king of Mycenae. And he was probably also the most powerful man in Greece. He convinced his brother to help get his wife back. Now the question is, why did Agamemnon give a shit? Well, um, maybe because he really did want to help his brother get his wife back, or maybe he saw this as an opportunity for conquest, or who knows. But Agamemnon agreed, and I'm sure somebody remembered, oh yeah, we all took the oath of Tyndarius. So basically every king and prince is bound to support the marriage between Menelaus and Helen, So, hey, let's just uh, send messengers out and uh, remind all these guys they have an oath to fulfill. Now, word spread pretty quickly about what had happened. So I guess this would have been the time that Thetis had feared the most, the beginning of the Trojan War. So she was very adamant about protecting her son Achilles, so she went and got him. I guess he was still with Chiron and Patroclus and uh, basically took him to the island of Skyros in the middle of the Aegean Sea. Um, some sources uh, kind of make it seem like Patroclus went with him, but if she's trying to hide Achilles, having uh, Patroclus around doesn't make a lot of sense. So he probably just went back to Peleus' uh, palace to be with his father. But yeah, so Thetis took Achilles to the island of Skyros. Skyros was uh, ruled by the king Lycomedes, 
who a few years before actually uh, killed Theseus. <laughs> Just kind of crazy. Well, if you remember, um, Theseus had lost his kingdom of Athens and basically was exiled now. So he kind of fled to the island of Skyros and was greeted warmly there. But Lycomedes was naturally kind of paranoid. I mean, he was like, is Theseus going to kill me and take my kingdom? So Lycomedes and Theseus went on top of a cliff. And uh, when Theseus was checking out the view, Lycomedes pushed him off the cliff. So, yipe. Kind of crazy. But, I mean, eh, he kind of had some uh, legitimate reasons, I guess. And he probably wanted to do uh, the new king of Athens, uh, Menetheus, a favor. So, yeah, kind of murdered Theseus there. Kind of a sad ending to the man who killed the Minotaur, but, yeah, man. Now, Thetis' plan for hiding Achilles there involved him basically dressing up and acting like a girl. Because Lycomedes had a lot of daughters and stuff, I guess her plan was to kind of hide um, Achilles as a lady-in-waiting, basically. Now, Achilles would have been about 15 at this time, so he would have been basically well into puberty and stuff. But he had long, supposedly auburn-colored hair. I think that's what Homer said his hair color was and stuff. And uh, he was supposed to be a great singer, great musician, so... I guess he kind of could pull off the whole feminine thing a little bit. But uh, while he was there, he kind of, I don't know, fell in love, but whatever, got jiggy with uh, one of Lycomedes' uh, daughters, uh, Diadymia. So that will actually be a pretty big deal later on in the story, but for the meantime, uh, Achilles is hanging out there. I'm sure he's bored stiff having to play as a chick, but... Uh, his mom said, you're staying here. You're not going to go off to Troy and die. Because basically an oracle or a prophet or maybe she did her own uh, looking into the future. But basically the thing is Achilles can have a long life without glory or a short life with glory. So naturally like all mothers, they want their son to have a long life, not a short one. So he's staying on Skyros for the time being. Now back at sea with uh, Helen and Paris, um, I came across an uh, interesting thing on Wikipedia where Euripides and Herodotus said that on the way back to Troy, Paris stopped at Egypt on the way and left Helen there and basically took like uh, another chick with him, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but... According to Wikipedia, Herodotus later on went to Egypt himself and talked to a couple of priests at a temple there. And they uh, said, yeah, Helen was here, da 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 But that's probably nonsense, seeing how Herodotus would have been doing this, I mean, almost a thousand years after the war. So let's just assume, yeah, Helen and Paris both went back to Troy. Now, when they got there... People were naturally pretty surprised, but they were also taken by Helen's great beauty, and uh, they kind of welcomed her as Helen of Troy. Um, Priam had to be put into a pretty weird situation. I mean, he could have ordered uh, Helen be sent back and stuff, but I don't know. Maybe Paris said he would go with her to a certain death, you know, and... Uh, Maybe Priam felt guilty for abandoning his son when he was a baby. So maybe he was trying to make it up to Paris. Now, naturally, one person who was not happy to see Helen was Cassandra, who attacked Helen and was just, you know, screaming, saying, you'll doom us all and stuff like that. So she had to be restrained. And naturally, that kind of made Cassandra look even more insane. So, eh. But, um, if only they had listened, huh? 